buckwheat is high in protein, full of micronutrients and fibers, gluten-free, and makes delicious pancakes and noodles. In fact, for hundreds of years, our ancestors used buckwheat as a staple part of their diet. Buckwheat is a great crop as it isn't affected by most diseases and pests that impact the production of many other crops we eat, like wheat, rice, and corn. It also requires fewer fertilizers. But despite all this, buckwheat has largely fallen off the menu. As farming has become more mechanized, more reliable, easier to grow crops have taken its place. As buckwheat doesn't ripen uniformly like other crops, it makes it hard for farmers to harvest everything with a single combined harvester trip. Because buckwheat can't pollinate itself, it relies on insects for pollination. Therefore, the varieties are genetically speaking heterogeneous populations. This cross-pollination makes it much more difficult to improve the buckwheat crop and produce stable varieties. So there hasn't been much attention focused on breeding new cultivars, which will be better for farmers and consumers. That's where we come in. If we find types of buckwheat that will work better for farmers, the crop could start to find its way back into the field and the kitchen again. So we started to explore what made these varieties grow more reliably over a period of two years. By combining both agronomical aspects and cutting edge genomic techniques, we were able to understand buckwheat in a brand new way. So guess what we found? Despite being from the same variety, the plants look quite different. We assess this by measuring the height, number of flowers, seed production, and nutritional traits like protein and antioxidants. We also found that weather conditions have a great impact on all these traits. For example, we harvested on average 4.4 times more buckwheat in 2015 than we did in 2014. By comparing the genetic diversity between varieties, we found that those coming from the same region or country are usually genetically more similar to each other. Linking traits that are both important to both the farmer and consumer with genetic data, we started our journey uncovering some potential genetic regions that seem to be influencing the yield, height, and nutritional traits. The good news is that we now know how we might be able to develop a large-scale project that finds out exactly how and where we can grow buckwheat with the reliability that farmers and consumers want. If we can do all that, nutritious and delicious buckwheat might well find its way back into being the staple crop that it was for centuries.